are here at Sports Tech Tokyo with Mark Mastelier, CEO of Halo Neuroscience. Uh, I feel like you know, we're, at, we're at a pretty cutting edge place when we're thinking of where things are going in sports. I, I think neuroscience is about as far as you probably can go deep into the future here. Right, right. So yeah, no, we're, uh, we believe kind of the brain is really critical to athletic performance and training. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of that's been overlooked and I think it's just an emerging field. So excited to be here uh, and excited to kind of be in the field of neuroscience. Yeah, so how, I guess, how did you get here? I mean, I know you've worked with the NBA, you've worked a lot of places. What, I guess, was the skill set you needed to cultivate to kind of come into this tech space that's about as far into the tech space as it gets relative to maybe just a more business development type role? Right, right. So yeah, I've worked for companies like Nike, uh, the NBA, Wrigley uh, in Chicago, Gum Company, and I, um, you know, I just, I, I think in any business, it's really, really critical to know your consumer, understand the kind of the, the you know, the customer journey and how they learn about your products and why they need the products and how it fits in their lives. So I just, I was hired because of my kind of skill set, understanding athletes in particular, and uh, have just really enjoyed kind of launching the business and, you know, driving our success thus far. So a lot of work to do, educating the world on, you yeah. know, neuroscience, but we're getting there. Yeah, and I'll get to that, but you know, for you, you have this background, you've been places. What made you say yes to this? What intrigued you enough to say, you know what, this is where I want to be doing you know, the next stage of my career? Yeah, yeah, so I, a few things. I mean, one, I always look at the founders of a company and you know, kind of what their pedigree is and what they've done in their past. So our, our founders are just you know, amazing people. They're, they're PhDs in neuroscience, they're Stanford MDs. So just amazing kind of science behind what we do. But you know, mostly uh, you know, I look at, at products that are disruptive and that kind of changes people's lives. And Halo interests me because you know, it was the world's first consumer brain stimulator company. Yeah. Um, had a really kind of cool idea, cool product, and that's how I got involved. You know, you say education, I think, for you know, so many products, especially here, that's the name of the game. But I feel like for you, it might be a little different in terms of it's one thing to give them just the basic knowledge level, this is what it does. But you say to the average person, there's gonna be electrical impulses involved. There might be people who are even nervous who might not get that, you know, this is this is not a thing that is going to hurt you. So I guess how do you how do you do that education? How do you communicate the message on two levels? Not just one, this is even why you should use this, but two it's okay to use this thing because this will help you. Right, and it might totally, we, we talked earlier about this, but I mean, I think, you know, when we launched the business, there were a lot of things we had to overcome. I mean, not the least of which was the science behind the products that we developed, which is called transcranial direct current stimulation. There's also, you know, the kind of the, explaining the motor cortex's role in athletic training, talking about the safety, which you highlighted, and I'll talk a little bit about the efficacy, does it work? I mean, there's yeah. been a lot of products that have been launched in the past where people think, you know, frankly, they're a bit snake oily, you know, they're just like, you know, people just question the claims that, that a lot of companies make. And lastly, the price point. So the science, we just, we relied on about 15 years of research mm -hmm. in the field of transcranial direct current simulation. So we didn't just, we didn't invent the technology. We just built the company on kind of the, you know, the, the shoulders of giants, if you will, that have done a ton of research on the safety of the product. Well, and I have to imagine too, you know, the people in the past who were snake oily, that just makes your job more difficult because you have to then, you know, almost untrain the consumer mindset of, hey, I know what it was like before. We're not that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you tell people, hey, we can help, you know, improve your golf swing speed by three miles an hour or your vertical leap by four inches. Like those are, you know, those are kind of big claims and a yeah. lot of people say that, but you know, I mean, we, you know, we've proven it through our results, through third party research and results as well. But all you can do is, you know, present the science to people, let them read all the peer reviewed literature and then you just, you know, you kind of hope for the best. Yeah. So how has the best been so far and what's kind of been those tweaks that you as CEO have said, okay, this is, it's been the first round, this has been the first phase, this is what we have to adjust moving yeah, forward. Yeah, it's a great question. So, so, you know, just what I said, it's kind of funny, but I talked about all these performance gains and, you know, truthfully, the average person, our, our products are mostly just sold to what I call kind of lifelong athletes. So these are people that may have competed in, you know, high school sports or college sports. They're working out four to five days a week and working out is really, kind of central to what they do. They're like these unhappy people that are, you know, grouchy if they don't work out. Right, right, right. So that's kind of our core audience. So it's not just the world-class athletes. So, you know, what we've, you know, kind of had to do is just, uh, you know, just understand what was important to them, talk to them. So we realized fairly early on that getting two more inches out of their vertical leap was not important to them. But what was important to them was like making their workout easier and helping them improve quicker. So our messaging quickly became just this kind of like, be the best athlete you can be message rather than get two more inches out of your vertical leap. Be the best athlete you can be, uh, but you gotta make 
you gotta make money. You right. gotta make this, you know, a profitable company. So sure. how do you how do you navigate different price points to make sure that, all right, this is getting the, in the hands of people, but you can only make it so accessible when you're dealing with technology so sophisticated. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So when we first started, I mean, our first product, Halo Sport One, um, which we've now sold out of, um, it was seven hundred forty nine dollars was the MSRP. So really expensive. And you know, a lot of people just, you know, with all the things I mentioned earlier, like understanding the science, being convinced that it works, it's really hard to sell a product at that price point. I'm proud to say we did. We've sold over 20,000 units of the first product. So a lot of those are out in the wild, but the new product that we announced here at Sports Tech Tokyo is a $299 product. That's what we're pre-selling it for. It will eventually be $399. It's opened up a whole new market to us. So, yeah. so people are price sensitive, obviously. And, what we're hoping to do is like give someone a product that has the quality of like, let's say a Beats by Dre headphone and our audio quality yeah. tests perfectly against that product. But hey, we're giving you brain neural stimulation for the same price. It's kind of a nice, uh, nice little bonus. <laughs> nice little uptick there, yeah. So for you, I mean, what are you defining? You know, this is this company's growing. You know, you as CEO, what what does success look like for you? Not even necessarily just metrics, but what do you what do you need to be doing as a company for you as a leader to kind yeah. of make sure this is going where you want it to go? Well, a lot of things. I mean, we're you know, God, we're not, you know, we've raised about $30 million by some big investors like Andreessen Horowitz and TPG Growth and Lux and Jazz. So we've got some great investors behind us, but the truth of the matter is, you know, even though we've sold 20,000 units, that's not, you know, considered success, if you will, in the hardware industry. I mean, you've got to sell, I mean, you know, 50,000, 100,000 a year. So we've got a lot of work to do to continue to educate, you know, customers and kind of pour gasoline on the fire. But I mean, more importantly, I think we built a company that has, we've got about 35 employees in San Francisco, not a ton, but these people like really, really passionately care about neuroscience, the brain, and just helping people become better. Yeah. Um, so where I think the business really scales is, uh, you know, I, today we debuted, you know, the, the motor cortex product, but we're working on products for other areas of the brain. So I mentioned you and I talked about this earlier, but like the frontal cortex area of your brain is responsible for memory, focus, yeah. attention, concentration many, many more people care about improving their memory than they do worried about, you know, their motor cortex area of their brain. So that's the future of the business and we're excited about, you know, where we are with that. So we're planning on rolling out a product that addresses just that later on this year. I mean, I think any business is built on credibility to a point, but I feel like with this one, it's it's critical. This is not an area where you where the data can be wrong. This is not an area where you can mislead your customers because that could be it just like that. Absolutely, you know, totally true. So we'll never, you know, we'll never, like I said, force any anything that isn't natural or, or push our research team. They operate in kind of their own silo. I yeah. interact with them, but I never ever tell them what I want like the marketing outcome to be. It's like the marketing should not lead the research. The research should lead our marketing message. So so we're really, you know, very much, you know, uh, just aware of that yeah. situation for sure. But, uh, but you know, I, I think the future's, you know, bright and we're excited about where we're headed.